Related to cases of children with supernatural phenomena, we have previously seen quite a few videos on this topic. For instance, the artistic genius Akian Kromerik, who could see God in her dreams, or kids with myopia, and those who have memories from within the womb, recalling what it was like before they were born and how it was inside their mother's belly. The main character we will discuss today is also a girl with extraordinary abilities. The heavens have bestowed upon her even more special powers. Every night, when it's time to go to sleep, she can control her soul to leave her body, travel all over the world, then fly from the earth to the moon, and back again. She has had some miraculous experiences in her dreams. Currently, she posts numerous videos on YouTube, sharing how she connects with her dreams and how wonderful it is. She says dreams are like doors or bridges leading to unknown lands or different dimensions that we are unaware of. And I believe that the whole earth is just a game, like a computer game or simulation, and we are characters called humans. So when my human character goes to sleep, my entity, the soul that plays this character, will step out of him or her and plan the whole journey. And he or she, who plays me, will pass through different levels, overcome various challenges. Furthermore, if you have doubts, that's okay. But I advise you to keep an open mind. Don't reject or accept immediately. Open your heart and explore, because there's plenty of evidence available on the internet, on Google about how dreams have influenced many important decisions on Earth. There have been many famous inventions, which have been and are being created by people who have seen something in their dreams or have gotten ideas from them. For example, Dmitry Medvedev's periodic table, Einstein's theory of relativity, or our DNA structure. Many musicians have composed their songs because they were inspired by their dreams. Even Google. If you still have doubts, you can break your belief limitations by researching and considering that evidence. After hearing this, you must be quite curious about this character, right? Today, let's discuss the miraculous story of Aker Kamiratova. Hello everyone, I'm Joe Feng. The main character in our story today is named Aker Kamiratova. Today, we will call her Aker. Aker's story begins when she turned four. Aker was born in a village in Kazakhstan a country located in Central Asia, the ninth largest country in the world. Since childhood, she was brought up by her grandparents. It's not that Aker didn't have parents, but after she was born, her parents had to move to the city for work. In a year, they barely got to see her a few times. Therefore, she always had a very faint impression of her parents. When Aker turned four, her mother came back to the village carrying in her arms a baby boy, Aker's younger brother. However, at that time, Aker could no longer remember that this woman was her mother. As her mother was feeding her baby brother, Aker sat next to her, watching her intently. And at that very moment, she felt as if all her memories had returned. Eventually, she recalled all her memories, including how she herself came into this world. In a dark tunnel, Aker at this moment is her truest self. She has thoughts but no body. She sees a white light in front of her, like a small dot. It's an exit. A gentle voice appears. Let's call it the Guardian. The Guardian tells Aker that she has to go to Earth. Aker is now full of curiosity and anticipation. She sees three women in her room. They are talking about something in a language that Aker doesn't understand. Aker is very curious about what they are talking about. The Guardian tells her that they are talking about a daughter. Aker doesn't understand what a daughter is, so the Guardian explains. A daughter can get pregnant and bring another life into existence. Aker feels that being a daughter, a life like this, is truly wonderful. As the light gets closer, a stream of energy pushes Aker into it. As she is drawn into the light, the Guardian keeps saying, Child, don't forget us. You are always loved. You will always be protected. Trust us. Aker replies, Yes, I won't forget you. The sound gradually fades away, and Aker enters the body of a baby. 
She doesn't like this feeling, especially the feeling of being tightly bound and unable to move. However, this feeling was quickly replaced as the nurse brought her into her mother's arms. She felt truly happy. Even though she didn't understand what her mother was saying to her, she could feel the love. Her mother was delighted by her presence. At this moment, four-year-old Acre suddenly snapped back to reality from her memories. She immediately began to detail everything to her mother. Acre's mother didn't show a bit of surprise. In fact, she too had inherited some special abilities that were yet to be discovered. From that day forward, there was no need for adults to urge her. Every time night fell, Acre would eagerly go to bed. This was because she had discovered that her soul could leave her body and even float in the air. After her soul had left, she could see herself sleeping. Furthermore, once her soul had left, it could travel around the earth, even fly from the earth to the moon, and then return. It was extremely fascinating. As she was young, Acre assumed everyone was the same. Acre could also communicate with animals and plants. She didn't need to speak out loud. Just by thinking in her mind, animals and plants could understand what she wanted to convey. However, she discovered that this kind of telepathy did not work with her grandparents. She had to speak out loud for them to receive information. This made her feel quite sad. Acre even had some dreams that predicted the future. She dreamed that over a period of time, her loved ones would pass away one by one. However, for a child like Acre, there was no concept of death. She was even very excited to share her dreams with her mother. Of course, her mother had already foreseen her own death. We will discuss this part later. After hearing Acre recount this story, her mother simply told Acre that she might have had a nightmare. However, everything that appeared in Acre's dream began to occur. First, her father passed away, followed by her mother's death, and then the grandparents who raised her passed away one after another. Only she and her younger brother remained. Because her mother had to work in the city all the time, Acre could only live with her uncle. But her uncle was a heavy drinker and often took his anger out on Acre when he was drunk. Yet, Acre did not hate him. In fact, she held a lot of affection for him in her heart. The reason is that Acre's abilities were not limited to just telepathy. In fact, she could also perceive the deepest, most profound emotions in people's hearts. Even though her uncle treated her badly when he was drunk, Acre could clearly feel his inner pain. Whenever he got drunk, danger was sure to follow. Although Acre didn't hold any religious beliefs, she still remembered the protector who had promised to look after her. When danger was imminent, the tiny spirits among the trees would tell her to run and hide quickly. The animals also allowed Acre to take refuge with them. Day after day, Acre went through such a period, realizing that her life could be in danger at any moment. The little girl seized an opportunity to call her mother, crying and begging her for help. Her mother was utterly shocked upon hearing these words. Her mother then took Acre to live with her in the city. Those perilous days had come to an end, but the final days of her mother were drawing near. A week before her mother passed away, her mother called Acre and her sibling for a talk. She said that their mother's time was nearly up, that she was about to leave this earth, and they would need to be brave. As it turns out, the reason why her mother knew about her impending departure was because all the women in her mother's lineage, known as healers, had the ability to foresee the future. Even though she knew that her mother's end was inevitable, when her mother actually passed away, Acre suddenly fell into confusion. The wheel of life had always revolved around her mother, with her dreams of growing up and being able to do something for her mother. Now, everything had collapsed. After spending all their savings, Acre's family and stepfather immigrated to Australia. Arriving in Australia marked the beginning of another nightmare. Acre, still very young, had to face very practical problems like language barriers, adjusting to a new environment, and not having enough money to eat, day by day. Acre was forced to earn a living to support herself and help her younger brother. She had to juggle between going to school and working. During this time, she also faced bullying, making her life a never-ending cycle of pain and sadness. Acre was in deep suffering, and she lost faith in the existence of any higher power. 
According to her perspective, if deities truly existed, why would they allow her to endure such immense pain and take away her mother from her? The girl grew frustrated and placed blame on everyone, including herself. Anyone who could be held accountable was criticized, and Aker fell into depression. She tried to end her life, not just once. One evening after finishing work, Aker looked up at the moon in the sky and started crying. In her heart, she thought, if there is a deity, please help me. Every time I've tried to seek death, I have failed. Indeed, there must be a reason why Aker has been helped by some higher power repeatedly, preventing her from achieving her desired outcome. Aker pleaded for the deity to reveal itself to her and questioned why her life had turned out this way. She expressed her willingness to change herself completely if the higher power was willing to help her. Unexpectedly, that very evening became a turning point in Aker's life. That evening, Aker went to bed as usual. When she opened her eyes again, she discovered herself lying in her mother's arms. They were inside a beautiful house, illuminated by a captivating light. Everything felt incredibly real, and Aker could hardly believe it. Despite knowing that her mother had passed away, it was strange for Aker to feel her mother's body warmth when she touched her. Through her mother's eyes, Aker saw the universe. She also noticed that her mother had become incredibly young, appearing to be only around 18 years old. There was a radiant white light emanating from her body, giving her a beautiful and angelic appearance. Aker shared her sorrows with her mother, and her mother listened attentively while gently patting her head and shoulders. It seemed as though she was conveying the message that everything would be all right. Aker looked up and noticed a beam of light enveloping both her and her mother. Within this light, she felt a profound sense of comfort, as if being healed. Aker began to feel that all the pain and suffering she had experienced on Earth was fading away. She realized that everything on Earth was just a dream, while the present moment felt real. If one were to say that she was in heaven, she would believe it. But at that moment, Aker suddenly woke up from her bed. It seemed that what she had experienced was nothing but a dream. Aker then discovered that her hand still retained the warmth from her mother's touch. This sensation was undeniably real. After this experience, Aker felt that all the painful experiences she had gone through in Australia, including depression and social anxiety, had vanished. 23 years of past suffering seemed to have distanced itself from Aker. It was as if she had forgotten her former self, as if she had undergone a complete transformation. Aker began to relearn everything from scratch, and along with her transformation, everything and everyone around her also changed. She felt surrounded by a radiant aura, and when she stepped out, it was as if everyone's eyes were on her. People became more receptive to her presence, and for the past 23 years, she felt as if someone had blinded her, but now her vision had been restored. All her abilities had returned once again. When the soul departs from the body, once again, Aker remembers that this is their true self. How could she have forgotten for so many years? Each time Aker leaves her body to wander, she always returns to Earth because she feels that her mission on Earth is not yet complete. There was one occasion when Aker experienced five consecutive nights of soul travel, where each night souls came to find her, including her uncle. However, these souls were different from how they appeared in the earthly realm. They had treated Aker poorly, but their souls now apologized to her. In the earthly realm, Aker felt resentment towards those who had hurt her. But when souls and souls meet, there is no feeling of resentment. Aker only feels overflowing love and a sense of belonging, as if they have known each other for a long time. These souls also speak to Aker, saying, Remember that it wasn't truly me who harmed you. My true nature would never cause you harm. So, what is true nature? What is the true meaning of life? After waking up, Aker continues to ponder these questions, seeking answers to her doubts. She uses her spiritual connection to reach out to higher realms of existence. She questions why she had to come to Earth. Unexpectedly, the higher realms of existence provide her with the answers she seeks. On that evening, Aker's soul once again departed. She saw something small, like a tiny fairy, 
emitting a radiant light that she had never seen on earth. In the fairy's hand was a contract. Aker noticed that it was a written contract, but she couldn't see what was written on it. After waking up, Aker felt confused and couldn't understand the nature of the contract that the tiny fairy showed her. Due to Aker's meditation practice, she often used telepathy to ask questions. This time, she received a response from a higher realm, informing her that it was a soul contract. Intrigued, Aker felt compelled to go to the library, hoping to find answers. Though uncertain about the nature of the contract, she had a name in her mind, Albert. Curiously, when she spoke the name, her phone's Google Assistant provided instructions to open Albert Einstein's page. Aker randomly asked the librarian if they had any books by Einstein in the library. The woman at the counter introduced a book called Einstein's Universe. After reading this book, Aker admired Einstein greatly. She felt that he was a brilliant person who could see the beauty in everything. He didn't oppose any religion and didn't identify himself as belonging to any specific religion. Even his perspective on the universe was similar to Aker's. The most interesting thing was that Einstein once said, if you ask me what my religion is, it is the universe that I believe in. Aker found it fascinating because she realized that she was also a part of the universe. However, despite reading several books by Einstein, she still felt that the final answer was far, far away. In one instance during her time in Russia, Aker had an involuntary out-of-body experience. She asked if her guardian felt she was ready and requested them to manifest and provide her with the answer. As a result, she encountered her guardian, and her soul was embraced by a radiant light. She also met two enlightened beings who patiently answered all of her questions. The higher beings informed Aker that she had a purpose in this lifetime, which was to support the elevation of Earth's frequency and facilitate the transition to a new Earth, accelerating its evolution. However, Aker was reminded that Earth itself was also playing a part in this process, and she was merely a supporter. Her role included helping others awaken and evolve alongside her. The body may find it difficult to comprehend, but Aker did not intentionally do anything. She questioned how she could possibly help and believe that she was not actively contributing. However, beyond imagination, the higher beings acknowledged that Aker had been doing well. They explained that whatever she did, she could not separate herself from the soul contract she had signed. Everything was being carried out according to the divine plan and the agreement she had made. Aker asked how she could do even better, and the answer she received was that she didn't need to do anything extraordinary. She was advised to simply be herself and treat herself and others with kindness. The higher beings emphasized the importance of demonstrating true goodness and integrity to those around her. Aker pondered on what it truly meant to be good-hearted. That's right. By being true to yourself and radiating kindness, you are subtly helping others awaken and transform. It's a natural process, and you don't need to overly focus on it. Your genuine actions and positive energy will naturally influence those around you. Just continue being yourself and embracing the journey as it unfolds. However, Aker feels disheartened because her close ones are different from her and do not understand her. She wonders when they will awaken. The higher realms explain that this is connected to their soul contracts, and each individual has predetermined timing for their awakening. Within the soul contract, there are certain predetermined events that cannot be changed. However, there are also aspects that can be influenced by the individual's intentions and choices. The sorrows and challenges Aker faced during her childhood and youth were written in her soul contract, which she had willingly agreed to. Therefore, they were bound to happen as part of her journey. However, there are individuals who may not choose to awaken and remain unaware during their lifetime on Earth, continuing the cycle of reincarnation. Despite this, Aker doesn't believe she is anything special. She recognizes that every life is unique and sacred, with the potential to communicate with higher realms, just like her. That's true. Humans don't necessarily need to use spiritual communication or intuition to understand some small events happening around them. Sometimes, paying attention 
and being aware of our surroundings can provide us with answers and insights. Aker believes that during meditation, when her mind is calm, it becomes easier to receive information from the outside. Along with her own personal growth and transformation, she notices that the people around her are also changing. Meditation allows her to tune in to a deeper level of awareness and perceive these shifts more clearly. In relation to this point, I also deeply resonate with the idea that if we can identify any issues within ourselves in any given situation and work on our own personal growth, it is highly likely that things will change for the better. When we initiate change within ourselves, it has a ripple effect and can positively influence the circumstances and relationships around us. By taking responsibility for our own growth and actively working towards self-improvement, we create the conditions for positive transformations in various aspects of our lives. In life, when we encounter difficulties, hardships, and feel lost, even for a long time, we may seek awakening as a contract for finding clarity. I wonder, what are your thoughts? Do you believe you are already awakened? Do you believe that true awakening can help both yourself and those around you? Welcome, everyone. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below the video. Let's pause our discussion here for today. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to share it with a friend. Keep watching and thank you very much. Goodbye and see you next time.